Now to Rome and the very latest on the Pope's startling resignation yesterday, the first time in 600 years a Pope has done this. But take a look at this photo. It's going viral madly Monday of a bolt of lightning striking St. Peter's the same day the Pope announced that he would step down. Around the world, from ordinary parishioners to Vatican insiders, the reaction was the same. Today's decision by Benedict XVI to resign from the papacy came as a huge surprise to me and I think to everyone in Rome and also to everyone in the Vatican. For almost 600 years it hadn't happened. For almost 600 years popes died in office. So with this one stroke, Benedict XVI changed history. No one alive has ever seen anything like that happen. And the dynamics of that I think are completely unknown. I'll show you some extraordinary pictures which came to us from the Vatican on what was of course an extraordinary day. Within hours of Pope Benedict announcing that he was to resign, take a look at this. Lightning struck St. Peter's Basilica. You can see it again now in slow motion. Extraordinary. It happened just before six o'clock in the evening, local time. been called the People's Pope, and in just nine months, he's captured the imagination not just of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics, but the world itself. I get it on the streets. I mean, everybody from the bartender to the cab driver telling me, uh, Cardinal Dolan, we love this guy. He's also ushered in a kind of truce in the culture wars, and both Time Magazine and the leading gay magazine, The Advocate, have named him their Person of the Year. The first non-European pontiff in over 1,200 years. His style was different almost immediately to the thousands before him as he bowed and said, Pray for me. And suddenly there was a connection with people. Well, we don't know what this means, but we can show you an extraordinary photograph of an extraordinary lightning strike at the Christ the Redeemer statue that towers over the city of Rio. More than just an outburst of nature, it apparently caused damage. The local newspaper is reporting it cracked part of a thumb on one of the arms of the famed statue. Today at St. Peter's Square in the Vatican, what started out as a peaceful gesture ended in a fury of feathers. Tens of thousands watched as two children stood alongside Pope Francis at his papal window. The children released a pair of doves. But the birds of peace were quickly attacked by two birds of prey. One dove lost some feathers as it broke free from the gull, but the crow pecked repeatedly at the other dove. It was not clear what happened to the doves as they flew off. This came as the Pope made a plea for peace in Ukraine. We're going to turn overseas now. Pope Francis has arrived in the Mideast to begin a historic visit, his first as head of the Roman Catholic Church. The three-day journey to Jordan, Israel, and the West Bank is sure to test his diplomatic skills. And he's already bringing that openness and naturalness that's made him something of a rock star, Pope. He left Rome this morning and he tweeted from the plane asking people to pray for him during this trip. The move marks the first time an official papal delegation has included members of other faiths and adds to Francis's budding reputation of bucking the trend. He's expected to speak about unity and peace in the volatile region and to schedule talks with leaders, including the Palestinian Authority's Mahmoud Abbas and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And take a look at this. Lightning struck the top of the New World Trade Center last night. No damage reported, but it was quite a sight. I know it's a really good, it's a, it's a really good tap. Francis will be praying for peace tomorrow at the Vatican. It's something popes do often, but this time he won't be alone. He's invited Israel's President Shimon Peres and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to join him. Alan Pizzi's in Rome with more on this unprecedented meeting. It's the first time such a meeting has ever taken place in the Vatican. The invitation came as an apparently spontaneous announcement by Pope Francis during his trip to the Holy Land. Anything concrete out of the prayer meeting would be akin to a miracle. 
The so-called peace process has defied the best efforts of the U.S. and other would-be mediators for 20 years. Palestinian officials hailed the Pope's decision to arrive first in Bethlehem in a nod to Palestinian aspirations for full statehood, when previous popes have always come to the West Bank after first arriving in Tel Aviv, Israel. For the good of all, I encourage everyone to double up efforts and initiatives aimed at creating the conditions for a stable peace based on justice, on the recognition of everyone's rights, and on mutual security. More than 60,000 people will pack Yankee Stadium tomorrow for a night of hope. It's a huge event featuring Lakewood Church Pastor Joel Osteen and his wife Victoria. Before he arrived in New York, Osteen paid a special visit to the Vatican, where he met with Pope Francis. As we sat down and talked about the preparations for the big event, Joel revealed to me an incredible opportunity he just had to meet with Pope Francis. I just felt very honored and very humbled. You know, seeing the Pope give the Mass to 100,000 people that day, you just see you know, he has such a heart to help people. I love the fact that he's made the church more inclusive, not trying to make it smaller, but to try to make it larger, to take everybody in. So that just resonates with me. I think the message is, is that they respect people, all people, and that they want to see unity. Blood moon on the rise. The first total lunar eclipse for North America in more than two years. That blockbuster astronomical event overnight that just lit up Twitter and Instagram, the blood moon. Millions, not us, but millions, staying up to catch a glimpse of the lunar eclipse. This is the first of four total lunar eclipses, or blood moons, we'll see in the next year and a half. Well, they could be just really beautiful cosmological events, or are they tied to biblical prophecy? Today is the first of four blood moon eclipses, rare occurrences that some biblical scholars say signal earth-shattering events, particularly when they happen around the Jewish High Holy Days. In Genesis 1.14, God created the sun and the moon, it says, for signals on basically Passover, on his feast days, his appointed times. So for me, if that's what the Bible says, that we need to be watching when those events happen. Now, they, uh, we've had these four blood moons, which is a tetrad, which is four occurring in a, in a specific um, uh, a period of time. This has happened before, right? Over the last 2,000 years, there's been 62 tetrads, but only eight times have they occurred on the biblical holidays. And in the last three of those, uh, they've had great uh, significance for the nation of Israel. Parts of the Midwest are cleaning up after a rare and dangerous weather event. Chicago's tallest building was hit repeatedly by lightning. A lot of severe weather out there slamming the Midwest. We have some pictures from Chicago last night. Look at the lightning strikes there. Several big buildings at the same time. Lightning, look at that, striking the Willis wow. Tower. Formerly the Sears Tower, look at that wow. show, what a show. The storm also canceled hundreds of flights out of O'Hare. Lightning striking several skyscrapers all at once. Into Israel now, and these images this evening, a ball of fire following an Israeli airstrike, and all of it in reaction to this. We showed you last night their faces on our broadcast, those three teenage boys lost, believed dead, one of them a U.S. citizen. We're covering a breaking news situation as the skies over Israel have lit up tonight. Sirens have sounded and Israelis have been told they have between 15 seconds and one minute to run to shelter and avoid rockets coming in, launched by Hamas in this escalation of violence that many fear could easily become the next war fought in that region of constant troubles. Video came into us tonight showing a wedding in Israel interrupted by sirens. When they sound, people scatter as they're told to as incoming rockets trigger outgoing Israeli missiles meant to destroy them in midair. Tonight there are missile launches and airstrikes underway. Israel has called up many reservists. This is a major escalation. 
There are sirens wailing across Israel over its two largest cities. Several days into the latest escalation between Israel and Hamas, and the situation in Gaza has not eased. Israel appears to be preparing for more hard-hitting campaigns to rein in Hamas rocket fire. Rockets continue to be fired vigorously from Gaza, with disparate militant groups working together to strike Israel. And a major move in the crisis in the Middle East, Israeli ground troops moved into Gaza briefly tonight. Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, is now in the hands of the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. ISIS, as it's known, now controls a vast stretch of territory from western Syria to central Iraq. ISIS and its allies are now flush with U.S. supplied weapons and ammunition abandoned by Iraqi troops. And if the Iraqi army fails to crush its enemies, a radical, aggressive Islamist state close to Israel's borders could become a reality. Former chief Israeli army intelligence analyst Jacques Neria sees the upheaval in Iraq as an opportunity to prepare for perilous times ahead. Militants possibly seizing nuclear material. That is a small amount, just 88 pounds, we are told. And the International Atomic Energy Agency is saying that it is low-grade uranium. 